What I've done in the last year is I've never taken any bank loan. I've never taken any loan from any source. I want the poor masses of Benue just to have a feel of transparency and true, good, democratic governance. Just to be accountable. So, we have demonstrated this for them to understand that a few individuals who are cashing in fat on the entire Benue. And so, it was my responsibility to have them exposed. I didn't have to talk. But whatever we got in there had to be properly channeled. The pension, the damage on salaries and pension and gratuity, you'll be so shocked to hear that it, it, it's in billions of Naira. Is it that the federal government could not support the state? The federal government supported. And then it tells you that there was a calibration, you know, uh, that people must stay poor, people must be suffered. That is not democracy. That is not the renewed hope agenda. The renewed hope agenda we all came on board with, our president came on board with, is the practicality of what a poor person can gain. How we can, uh, you know, remove that veil so that they see the light, they come to the light, and they exercise and work in the light. This is the new democracy we have brought to bear. And this is why certain decisions are quite hard to make. And you know, for quite some time, I didn't have a car to drive as a governor. For nine months, I did not have a car to drive. But I managed the car I had during the campaigns. That was what I was back and forth with here. It was a difficult decision for me to make. But we had to do it. I could have conscripted the money for patients, the money for salaries to do this. But I knew the people were burning so badly that they needed some cushioning. I needed some cushioning myself because I knew I was, the demands were already tall. The more support I had, I knew right behind my mind that this, I mean the, the expectations were also humongous. So we needed to do what was going to be on the side of the people, for the people, and in the interest of the entire state. So I had to make that difficult decision. So I said, instead of packing all this now for my deputy governor, for the, uh, the executive council, the commissioners, and then the major advisors and all that, I went in and pleaded with them, saying, gentlemen, we are leaders, and not just leaders. We must transform this state, meaning, we must be transformative leaders. And a transformative leader leads by example. If we don't do this thing, it will just be a deja vu. We'll be playing back the world record to the entire Benway people. And guess what? Under one month, either we run away or they will push us. So that was why we had to do, take that option. So we made the sacrifice, you know, that everything that came in had to give a push in it to the civil servants. When we came in, most civil servants were not coming to work. Local government headquarters were outgrown with wheat. So the system had collapsed. So, but we needed to revive all this. And we needed to lead by example. I said, I'm willing to do this. And then the deputy said, we are towing the same line. And everybody in the room said, it's the same thing. We needed to do just the need for you. You know, ask them how many months they were not paid. I've not been paid even as I'm speaking here. I've never taken salary in the, in the last one year. My deputy governor has never taken his salary in the last one year. So, but we needed to let people understand.
understand that we not only came in to make a difference, we came in to let them know that when you sacrifice something they like to do. And the Bengo is so rich, so rich. So the few people who chose to enslave us, the few people who painted a different picture. That the federal government never gave money to the states. We we're all liars. And I needed to prove that they were liars or they are liars. Not by talking, not by making any sound bite, but demonstratively putting in place the payment of salary, pension, and gratuities, and then the conduction and construction of the world. When we came in, there was a deconstruction of the entire system. And for us to make a new construction, and then in some places to reconstruct, took every energy out of the, out of the new administration. But today, I'm not even thinking about the sacrifices in the last year. I'm not even thinking about the pains. I can tell you, I traveled the other day from here to Abuja. I think the car experienced, you know, the wear and tear um, after Akwanga, you know, started slowing down at the point it stopped. Who was still there? I said, you guys, I may mean, not worry. I've seen what the future was for all of us. And the younger people just say, pretty well, well, ah, yeah, but you are a governor. I say, I know. For now, no one takes it away from me. But the primary thing is, not just a governor in there. I want our system to work. And one way to work is, do you know how much one car costs? So, we have to Just wonder what would have been if we never closed our eyes to certain things. So resilience, you know, commitment, and they uh, has to be very intentional. So I, I'm happy that we are able to achieve, you know, this kind of a feat. And uh, uh, so is it that we are not going to take any loans? Uh, probably now the people understand that. If Without loans, their, their salaries can be paid. So just imagine, in the next one year, we, we tell them what I have to do to advance this course going forward. They will be the ones saying, go take this money, come and make us proud. Because we've demonstrated accountability. And we've shown them that in the nearest possible time. When you talk of Benue, or when you are in Lagos and you are thinking Lagos, the name Benue should be coming to your head. And that is my target. These are things we can do. We can achieve these things. And just with that resilience, you know, and, and targeted. And that is where we are headed.